All right, last thing, let's uh, kick it on down to Lexington. We're going to get to our interview here with Sean Smith of uh, Kentucky Daily in just a moment. But uh, right before we do that, offensive coordinator Liam Cohen, he met with the media, and um, I, I thought this was pretty interesting because this is uh, you know, one of the match key matchups, arguably the biggest matchup of the coaching front going into this Kentucky-Missouri game. Liam Cohen has been on NFL staffs that have faced Steve Wilkes, so the familiarity is there. Going to be fascinating to see the wrinkles that these coaches come up with for Saturday's matchup. Liam Cohen was asked about that, facing Steve Wilkes previously, on the adjustments that uh, the Rams had to make because they were struggling so much against Steve Wilkes. And, uh, hell, Missouri was all over Central Michigan's quarterback. Nine sacks all over the field. Uh, Blaze Aldridge, I believe, had three himself. Multiple turnovers forced by Steve Wilkes' defense, and that's that's the key. I mean, they, they got a little bit run on, but – uh, they're going to be a bend, but don't break for hit the quarterback, force turnovers, get the, just get them down. Uh, and I think that'll be huge for this Kentucky game. So let's kick it over to Liam Cohen, who kind of breaks down this coaching matchup, his mind against Steve Wilkes. You uh, went up against Steve Wilkes a few times, yeah. uh, divisional opponents. Mm-hmm. So what, what do you just recall from those matchups and how his team played? Uh, aggressive, ton of man coverage. Um, you know, they had some really good players, Buda Baker, Patrick Peterson. They had some guys that could really play in the secondary that can play man coverage and fly around. They want to get their safeties in the box. They want to try to stop the run and challenge you on the perimeter to throw the football and challenge you to win one-on-one matchups. And um, that's something that we have to try to you know, def- defeat. I mean, that's a big challenge for us on the perimeter at the quarterback position. What that What his defense does is it creates tight window throws because he plays so much man coverage. All that is, it's it's constant tight window throws where when you typically play against more zone and oriented defenses, there's a little bit more voids. I know it was only one game, but was there anything in there that was different from the NFL college job? Not really, to be honest. I mean, it looked very similar from you know what he was in Arizona and then what he was when we played them in 2019 at Cleveland with you know, he, he threw some wrinkles at us, um, you know, in Cleveland in 2019 that we'll be ready for, you know, that we have a pr- preparation for as well. I was going to ask you about that game in Cleveland. You, you guys had three at the half and mm-hmm. obviously had to make some adjustments. Yeah. Came out with, what, is that something you anticipate will be big? I do. I do. I mean, I think they've got to have some things ready for us, right? They've had a lot of time to prepare, as have we for them. And um, I got to believe that they're going to be ready to go and have some things that were probably unscouted looks that we need to be ready for and be ready to adjust. Uh, Similar to this past game in a lot of ways where we had an idea what they were going to do, but we needed to prepare for some unscouted looks and have some adjustments ready to go. And, um, you know, speaking of like the the post of Ali, that was not in our game plan. You know, that that came from up top, from the guys up top that saw something from the previous drive when we threw the deep curl to Ali. And that came from up top. We didn't have that play in the game plan. And our guys went out and executed at a high level. What do you do when you look at you know, the film from Missouri this past weekend? How, what, what made them so able to put so much pressure? They had, they had they're sacks, they're, they're good up front, man. They got some long athletic kids up front uh, that can really rush the passer. And they're so aggressive in their man coverage that when the w- running back blocks in protection, they add their backers on because they're covering them in man coverage. They green, what we call green dog the back. And that allows for what you would think would be a four man pressure or four man rush instantly becomes five or six when the, the linebackers see the backs block. And so that's something that we need to really be ready for. And, and that's a challenge in itself that presents us. All right, so I just thought that would be the perfect uh, clip here leading up to our interview with Sean Smith, the founder of GoBigBlueCountry.com and the host of the Kentucky Daily Podcast, Sean Smith. Really appreciate uh, his breakdown here of the upcoming matchup between Kentucky and Missouri. All right, we're pleased now to be joined by uh, Sean Smith. He's the founder of GoBigBlueCountry.com. He hosts an outstanding show, Kentucky Daily, and you can follow Sean at GBB Country. Sean, thanks so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Mike, I really appreciate you having me on. Looking forward to it. Yeah, so, uh, you know, obviously I really wanted to have you on to talk about this uh, huge matchup with Missouri, but uh, before we get to that game, 
just wanted to get your thoughts on uh, the new offense and Will Levis. I mean, my God, that was maybe the most eye-opening thing there week one in the SEC. I know the competition, not exactly stellar, but big play passing on first down, that was eye-opening to me. They had four passing plays of over 30 yards, which matched the, the total from all of last season. Heck, they had four passing touchdowns. So what were your thoughts on the offense and, and Will Levis engineering it? it? It just looks like they have a guy that's confident in slinging the football, something that they've not had in a long time, Mike. You you know that. Ever, ever since Mark Stoops has been in Lexington, they, they've not had someone that just had that confidence to make those throws. And the big one to me was the the, the big touchdown to Josh Ali there in the first quarter because he had a wide open running back for a check down that probably would have gone for 25 to 30 yards in past years. Kentucky's quarterbacks, I don't even think, would have taken that shot down the field. They would have just dumped it off. His eyes were downfield the entire time. I mean, everybody assumed that this offense would be better under Liam Cohen, but and obviously the, the competition wasn't great, and we'll know more this week. But just the way that they the, the, the way that they scheme things up and just the creativity with that offense, 14 personnel there on one play on the goal line and a touchdown to Brendan Bates, I, I thought it was uh, the perfect – just debut, just give it, a, give it a little bit. We don't really know how much they showed, how much they'll show moving this week. Liam Cohen talked about that they left some some yards there in the running game where Chris Rodriguez is getting used to that new run scheme. But just overall, just you couldn't ask for anything better from a debut. And, I mean, Will Levis was incredible. Well, I'm glad you uh, touched on Josh Ali because I wanted to ask you about him next. Wandale Robinson, of course, you know, lived up to the billing. He looked incredible. But, you know, they're going to need, obviously – multiple options if they're going to contend in the SEC and for years I've heard you know what a good player Josh Ali is but we've not really been able to see it for obvious reasons they've not been able to get him the ball so was that a surprise to you at all just um, you know just how great he played and and do you think maybe he's one of the more underrated receivers in the SEC now that he's got a quarterback then get him the ball it didn't really surprise me because I always thought that Josh – I heard Josh was an excellent route runner from from people that had played with Josh, and we just never really got that opportunity to see it. And the year that they had Lynn Bowden playing quarterback, those receivers just lost so much development. You could even say they lost a lot of it last year. So I went into this year, I actually picked – and you don't really pick seniors, especially a fifth-year guy, to be your breakout player, but he was actually my breakout player pick. Usually that's a younger guy moving throughout the program. So I wasn't surprised with that. And I just think that having Wondell Robinson, having a guy like Chris Rodriguez on those play fakes that just requires so much attention, I think that you look at Josh Ali and he could be, honestly, I think he could end up leading them in receiving yards this year. Even though Wondell's probably their best option, mm -hmm. I think that Ali could be one of those guys on third down for Levis in the middle of the field that can make a lot of plays. Now, how fired up is uh, Big Blue Nation for this Missouri game? Because – I think uh, one thing we've yet to really see play out is, you know, after last season and the, the crowds not being in full effect, I don't know that we've seen yet visiting teams really being affected by the home crowd yet. I think we may be getting that in Lexington. It is, are we expecting a sellout there for Kentucky? I'm expecting it to be close for sure. I think that this will be the biggest game, obviously, since Florida came to town in 2019, and that was a sellout crowd. You see Vince Merrow on Twitter yesterday talking that they need Kentucky fans to sell it out. Mark Stoops has challenged fans. Will Levis has said it. I think that people are looking at this game. I, th I think, honestly, people have had it circled for a while. Mark Stoops downplayed this being a rivalry in the SEC East, but, Mike, whoever wins this game, it's a pivotal matchup. I mean, it propels one of these teams upward while the other one kind of it, it sets them back a little bit. I mean, Kentucky fans are dreaming of a 9-10 to win season. That doesn't happen. If they lose this game, if they win this game and they start four and oh, and they have a realistic chance to do that before they get into that middle third of the schedule, this is the game that really determines their season, in my opinion. Yeah. And, you know, I'm not huge into, you know, what's happened in the past really has any impact on this season. But under Mark Stoops, uh, as, as your co host there, uh, Derek Terry pointed out, I mean, the, the score is exactly 177 to 177 between Kentucky and Missouri in the Mark Stoops era. So, uh, you know, you cover this team, you do an outstanding job. But uh, in your mind, where's this game in the pecking order and how just how unbelievable is it that uh, year after year this is usually such a, a close game? Well, early on, so I started covering the program in 2017. And at that point, South Carolina was the game. That was the one that really sent the, the season one way or the other. 
I think that that is now shifted to Missouri. And I think that that's the bigger game. I think it's the biggest game on their schedule. I think it's bigger than Florida. I think it's bigger than LSU just because it, it sets the tone early. Being in week two, Mike, it's, I think it's the biggest matchup of the season for them because if they lose it, then you're going to have people saying, well, maybe Kentucky wasn't what we thought they were. Maybe Kentucky, we were maybe overhopping them after the first week. If they win it and can carry some of the, that momentum and get to that 4-0 mark, because I like them against Chattanooga, I like them against South Carolina. If they get this one, it's a realistic chance that they go into that middle third with Florida and LSU coming to Lexington unbeaten. If they do that, Lexington's going to be in a frenzy. I mean, that place is going to be sold out both weeks back to back. Um, not saying that they're going to catch Georgia and win the SEC East, but if you want to have a shot at second, you got to get this one. And that, that's why either of these teams, both these teams to me, have the potential to do that. The loser, I think, just doesn't have a chance. The winner really sets themselves up. Now, this game has, uh, you know, such a big impact for obvious reasons on this season. But is there any, I don't know if pressure is the right word, but if Kentucky were to lose to Missouri for two years in a row, you know, and this is just the beginning of the Drinkowitz era there in Columbia, does it really, in my mind, it cements Missouri as a better football program than Kentucky. I mean, I don't know how you can argue it otherwise so I mean it, do you see that and, and is there pressure on Mark Stoops to get this win based on that I think there is when you're talking about a program that talks all the time about wanting to climb the pecking order of the SEC you have to beat the Missouri's you have to beat the South Carolinas if you ever want to climb and be in that top two top three in your division and now the SEC adding more teams in the future you got to get these teams now and then in one note too there Mark Stoops has a chance to climb above 500 which is incredible. He was 12 and 26 at one point. And with the win Saturday, he would climb above 500 in year nine. So he's never had a 500 record at UK. The last coach, I'm pretty sure, Mike, that had a, well, Joker Phillips, I know, started out uh, really hot his first season. And then that kind of went the other way. But you'd have to go back to Hal Mummy as a coach that <laughs> this far in had a winning record into his tenure. So I think that that's another note as well that you you throw in there. It's It's a big game for Mark Stoops. It's a big game for the program. The fans, you're expecting it to be a full stadium. That This is the one that you grab attention. And I actually think Kentucky wins this game by about two touchdowns. I just think that Ooh. the revenge factor last year, that was the game that John Schlarman didn't make the trip right. out there at Como last year. And I think that team was going through so much that I, I think – and then Mark Stoops talked about it Monday. They weren't prepared, and that was on him. So I think that you're going to see a re-energized football team, a, a focused football team that I think wins this game by 14. You know, it's interesting because I was going to ask you about that. Um, you know, I've not seen Mark Stoops kind of come out and, you know, say he got out coached and, you know, vow that uh, that's not going to happen again. And I don't know if you caught Drinkowitz yesterday, but, uh, you know, he was heaping praise on Mark Stoops. And at the same time, he noted, well, hell, he's been there almost a decade and, you know, we're just getting this thing going. So I don't want to say he's making excuses, but clearly I think Drinkowitz outcoached Mark Stoops last year. So how much, not only Mark Stoops, but that entire Kentucky program, how much motivation does that give them this week preparing for the Tigers? It, it gives them a ton of motivation. I think that that's where it's at. I think that this staff has had this game circled since the schedule was released because of the way that they performed last year out there. I mean, they, I don't, I don't remember the exact numbers and passing yards, but it wasn't very much. I think that you're going to see this offense try to get creative a little more. Uh, they're obviously going to try to do better in the run game. I know, like I said earlier, Chris Rodriguez is learning that new scheme, that new blocking scheme and things, and he missed some yards, left them on the field. So I expect a heavy dose of that. And uh, I just think Will Levis, the confidence that he has. I mean, the, the thing that stands out to me, Mike, is they named him a team captain. His teammates did. This is a guy that didn't get on campus until the summer. And you go back, and I know someone pointed out to me on Twitter the other day, they said, well, usually the quarterback's a team captain. Well, not in Mark Stoops' tenure. I, I, you can go back and find four years where the starting quarterback was not a team captain. Even on the 2018 team that went 10-3, and three, Terry Wilson wasn't a captain. He was a transfer. So I think that that alone told me that whatever this guy has, whatever the confidence is, it's infectious. And I think it's bleeding throughout that locker room right now. And in this coaching staff, there's a swagger about him. And I think it honestly starts with Will Levis. Now, uh, Missouri had nine sacks against uh, Central Michigan in uh, Steve Wilkes' debut there last week. Obviously, Kentucky offensive line a lot better than uh, Central Michigan, but Kentucky's got a reputation as, as being an elite 
run blocking. How do you think uh, this offensive line holds up against uh, this pass rush that looks pretty impressive there for Missouri? Yeah, and I thought they held up nicely last week, but that's against ULM. I thought the pockets on those deep shots looked really good. I thought the running backs did a really good job in pass pro, but that's the one that you're watching. Uh, an offensive line, Darian Kennard and these guys who have just been run blocking and you know using the running game for the last few years. They have to be really good in pass pro, so I am paying, paying attention to that. And I, I think that's the matchup that you look at this week is uh, that offensive line and how they handle that. Do they give Will Levis a clean pocket? Are they good on third down? And uh, we'll see if some of these big plays will carry over to this matchup. All right, I want you to make a prediction for this. Uh, Chris Rodriguez rushing attempts or Will Levis pass attempts against Missouri? Which one's higher? Chris Rodriguez. Yeah, and I think that's the right answer because if, if you watch Missouri in the opener, I mean, CMU yep. had a ton of success on the ground. Right? We're all loving what Will Levis does, but uh, it it's, would seem to me that uh, – Chris Rodriguez has got to be your workhorse in a game like this. And, and that certainly seems to be the recipe for success against this Missouri defense, don't you think? The, the thing with this offense that I think is going to stand out the most is when you got a guy like Rodriguez, if you can set up that running game and get some of those play action plays and you got those receivers like a Wondell Robinson, you can throw underneath. I think that the underneath – part of this offense is actually going to be where Kentucky gets a lot of damage done this year. Not as much down the field and over the top. I think that middle of the field, those underneath balls are where it's at. All right, last thing for you, Sean. Obviously, you're picking Kentucky to win it. Not surprised uh, by that prediction, but uh, if Kentucky wins it, why? And then if Missouri wins it, if that were to happen, maybe there's uh, issues with Kentucky that you, you see being exploited. I'll go the revenge factor for UK. I think that they're going to be playing with, uh, with you know some emotion coming out. First big home game at Kroger Field in two years since the pandemic started. I'll go with UK winning it because of those things. And then if Missouri wins it, I think it might come from Kentucky maybe putting too much pressure on themselves. Or maybe ULM wasn't the competition Kentucky really needed, and maybe in this up this up level competition, this uptick in it, maybe is it, maybe Kentucky's not ready for it. Maybe the timing's off on some of those throws some of those plays, I think that would be the difference maker, honestly. I, I think Kentucky's the more talented team. When you look at recruiting, I think that they've recruited better to this point. But this, but Missouri's certainly closing the gap when it comes to four stars and the number of four stars on the roster. This is just a, mas a massive matchup. This is one that Mark Stoops does not want to lose. Uh, you want to get this one with two games coming up that you feel like you have a good shot at winning. This is just a massive game for both these programs. Who, whoever wins this game, I actually think we finished the second in the SEC East. That's how pivotal I think it is. All right. He's Sean Smith, founder of uh, GoBigBlueCountry.com, host of the Kentucky Daily Podcast. You give him a follow at GBB Country. I really appreciate you, Sean. I appreciate you, Mike. You do an excellent job.